You are listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. I'm Elena Paventa, Executive Communication Coach and TEDx Organizer. With each episode, I'll share with you communication tips and ideas from top business leaders to help you excel in your career. Welcome to the next episode of Ideas and Leaders podcast. Today, my guest is Chris McDonald. Uh, she's a holistic counselor and a book author. She teaches mindfulness, meditation, and yoga. And uh, it will be a very interesting conversation about some mindfulness strategies that we can apply in our daily life. Hi, Chris. Great to have you on Ideas and Leaders. Hello, Elena. So glad to be here. So, Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, what do you do? What What does it mean to be a holistic counselor? Uh, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, our our audience are mostly business people. So it is very interesting what you do. And then we will discuss how we can apply it in our business lives. Sure. So I'm a licensed mental health counselor and holistic therapist. So I have a private practice I own. Well, it's really two businesses in one. My first one is my private practice. So I, I focus on teaching teaching um, and working with young adults who have anxiety, depression, trauma, and grief. And I also have my second part of my, my business is holistic counseling podcast. So I'm a podcaster as well. Um, so as you can tell from the name, I'm passionate about all things holistic. So I love to use that in session with clients. And it's a little different than traditional therapy. A lot of people, when they think about counseling or therapy, they think of just talk therapy. And that's more of the traditional thoughts about it. And it's using more cognitive strategies. But with holistic therapy, it's all about treating the whole person. So we put all parts of the person in their mind, body, and spirit. So it's not just limited to talk therapy. And some of us also use different kinds of modalities. Like I use yoga in session with clients. And it's more about gentle kinds of yoga to help change the nervous system whether that could be regulating anxiety to more calming strategies or helping with energizing for more depression. So there's lots of different ways to, to use yoga. So it's integrating with the body. So I use a lot of what we call somatic therapy and having the body as part of therapy, especially with trauma can be really impactful. Mm. So you're using yeah. this holistic counseling and you're treating the whole body and spirit and, and mind everything together yes. because everything is combined. all together <laughs> yes and yeah. spirit too because a lot of therapists don't talk about spirit and it is whatever it is for the client so it's not like I push any values on them so I have in my intake forms if they want to talk about spirituality or religion that's totally up to them but I'm open to listen and helping make that part of their treatment plan and offering that, you know, if, if that's something that's going to help them to pray or to meditate, yoga, whatever it is, then that's something we can talk about and help to, them to integrate it more to help them to heal. Yes, it is so important. I think that it's so important to, to have a look at the problem holistically, because uh, I, I feel that every specialist or doctor or the mental health professional professional they, they're looking at the problem on, only from one side and the fact that you're looking at all of the aspects together I think that um, it is re really important it is rare so thank it you is. for what you're doing <laughs> yeah, yeah and and the and I'm just thinking too of the body too just to let listeners know that it's also about I promote a lot with exercise so promoting movement with the body because especially with anxiety, it's it's that energy that can be in your body. And we have to find ways to get that out and to release stress through movement. So too many people don't move enough and that can cause more, more issues in the body to into physical issues from anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Let's have a look at uh, the, the our typical listeners. So uh, I think that uh, the people who are listening to our podcast, they're business professionals, they're entrepreneurs, so they're very often very busy and they don't have time for maybe mindfulness moments and meditation moments, at least not enough time. And very often we are struggling with uh, some kind of anxiety or stress, so what would you recommend to to such people listening to us? I'm sure that you have 
worked with clients who are yes. business mm-hmm. professionals and you know that this type of, of person. So what would you recommend how to introduce this mindfulness to our lives? Well, the good news with mindfulness is it doesn't have to be a formal practice. Like I'm going to meditate at 7.30 this morning from 7.30 to 8. No, it doesn't have to, to be that way. We can do that. That's a great practice to have. But I think just to to ch- try to challenge your listeners that everybody has time for these practices. It's just making that a priority too. But with mindfulness, we can also do it an informal practice, which is with your regular daily activities. So this is things you're already doing, but then putting a mindful spin on it. And mindfulness means being in the present moment. So not worrying about, okay, what else is on my to-do list today? Or I have that meeting today. So let me bring myself back to the present moment and not worrying about the past. So what am I noticing in my body right now? What are the thoughts in my mind? What are, what is my energy? What sensations do I feel? These are all mindfulness kind of questions, just stopping, pausing, which listeners can do right now. Just what do I notice in my body? And I see a lot of people who live life from the neck up, meaning they're in their head a lot. So it's really hard for them to get back into the body. So so using these practices can be so helpful. So an informal practice would be, for an example, before you get out of bed, instead of just leaping from the bed as the alarm goes off, to, to kind of take your time to do it slowly, mindfully. You can just notice your breath, even slowing down, taking a few deep breaths, and using gratitude to start the day. So thinking of, Okay, what is it that I'm thankful for? I'm breathing today. I'm alive. That could be a start. Or something that you're grateful for that you want for this this day. Maybe something good is happening today. And then just as your feet touch the floor, just noticing sensation of your feet on the floor is being mindful. As you brush your teeth, noticing sensation that you can smell the toothpaste, feel it in your mouth, the coolness, feel the water in your mouth. So do you see the difference between that and okay, what else do I have to get done today? All right, what else do I need to prepare for this meeting? <laughs> I know, because I have, I, I also am type A, which I know a lot of business leaders are. So my mind can spin too. So it is, it is a practice, meaning that we have to do this many times to kind of understand it and just be like, oh, right. So this is what that means to really slow down a little bit more. Yes, it is. But it is so hard, at least for me. It I is. Get... <laughs> I I wake up, <laughs> I, I wake up, I start thinking immediately, okay, I should, today I should do this, 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 and this. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not aware of, you know, my feet on the floor and <laughs> how right. I did past days. I just <laughs> immediately, my mind is already at work, uh, yes. already, but I'm planning my calls, my things to do. So I think that it is, uh, we really need to make it intentional. We need to prioritize intentional is it. what it is. Yeah. And I, so what what is your recommendation? How we can actually prioritize such such elements during our everyday life? Yeah, and I think it's a reframe, right? So is it necessary that you have to start planning your meetings the minute you wake up, or can you give yourself that gift of a slower wake up? Just let me give myself fifteen minutes and get going in the morning and just use these practices, even just focusing on the breath, noticing it and slowing down. Cause you got to ask yourself, what is the consequence of go, go, go? What is going to happen in the future for you? If you're not taking the time to take care of yourself, cause there, stress can really wreak havoc on your body, your nervous system, your heart, your stomach. I see lots of people with stomach issues, digestive issues, heart issues, because they never slow down. And that stress just adds up and causes those physical sensations. So to take care of yourself, it starts today. And to really slow down, what can I do today to really notice and be present? Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, this uh, go, 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 and all the time being, doing something, it is also connected somehow with what you mentioned before, that you're working with trauma, with things that happen, because sometimes we are kind of trying to not think about some things that are very important. 
and hurry up and try to do many things instead. For me, for example, this is this is a typical thing to do that I'm when I have some major things, issues, problems, I'm trying to just, okay, let me not think about it and do uh, 10, 10 other projects instead. So that's why maybe we don't have time for this mindfulness because we don't allow ourselves to to be in the moment and to actually be in, you know, to, to pause for a moment. That's it. It's the pause, isn't it? It's just taking that. And you're right. Difficult things that we have in our lives, we want to avoid. Who wants to be close to the stress or anxiety or depression? It's like, okay, let me compartmentalize. I hear that a lot. Okay, I just lock it up, put it away because I got to focus on other things. But guess what? It doesn't go away. <laughs> when we have those emotions, our body remembers and it's going to come up in one way or another. And that, like, like I said, physical issues or other mental health issues, if you're not dealing with those difficult emotions and figuring out a way to process those. And, but again, going back to these holistic practices, even breath work is another thing that I teach that is so impactful that can really make a difference. And it is just having a longer exhale than an inhale is what turns on the relaxation response in the brain and really can help you bring that sense of calm. And that can be how you start your day and even taking breaks during the day. Okay. Lunchtime before this interview, I had to take a break because I'm going out of town tomorrow. So I'm getting easily into that rush, rush. Okay. What do I got to tie up and figure out an email and okay, let me just stop and take a breath. So I noticed, right. Okay. I'm going to slow down my breathing and take some longer exhale. So inhaling, and then a longer exhale and do that a few times and just notice, right? See, see the difference it can make. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we discussed the mindfulness that it's important to be in the moment, not necessarily meditate for a long time and plan this in our calendars. If, if we don't have uh, maybe time for this. So just to be in the moment, uh, those mindfulness, for example, in the morning, breathing exercises, and um, what about, for example, during the day when we are stressed and we feel this anxiety during the meeting or we, we just received an angry email from our colleague? So how to, how to deal with such um, moments to be more relaxed, to be more in our body, not in our head, and not, not to react maybe too emotionally? Yeah. So some of that can be grounding exercises and which to me, they're very similar to mindfulness. And and like I said, a lot of this is using your senses. Okay. What is something I hear in the room? What is something I smell? What are the colors I see in the room? So these are all grounding exercises, but they can kind of take you out of that anxiety and stress just for a moment. What are the shapes I see? I see a rectangle. I see a circle. I see a square. It sounds kind of crazy, but it really can kind of take you out of that moment and just put a little space, you know, bef between you and that overwhelm. And even just getting up, if you're, let's say you've got that difficult email, just get up from your desk, take a break. If you can go outside, get some sun. Sometimes I just stand outside in mountain pose because, you know, I love yoga and, and just feel the sun on my face. Just take that, that breath outside and just breathe allow myself just to connect to the earth and be present. Cause I think, especially as business people, we tend to be so involved with our businesses and planning ahead and looking at where we are with everything. And it's just, we just need to sometimes get back with nature, get back to the basics and we're not outside enough. I think that that can cause some other mental health issues when you're too much inside, too much screen time too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to be more outside to 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 be to do grounding exercises, and also you mentioned physical exercises. So, what uh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. would you recommend our listeners to to do some physical exercises, and maybe which one specifically? Yeah, uh, well, I always recommend yoga. <laughs> but I'm I'm partial to yoga because yeah. I'm a yoga teacher. Um, but even just to, to reframe that, so you don't have to do a 90-minute class to get benefits. So research shows that even three times a week for 20 minutes 
That is all. That's And if you do that for two weeks, it's going to show changes in your brain. It's going to show changes in your response time to stress. So it increases what's called that window of tolerance so that when stress comes your way, guess what? It's going to take a lot more to throw you off balance. So I, I like to teach the preventative approach, which is to do more of these practices so that you don't be, you aren't as reactive to stress so that you can build that, what's called that inner resilience, that strength. So it's like, okay, so I can handle this more. And, and you have almost the cognitive approach too, that, that positive self-talk that I got this. Okay. So this email came in, let me just stop for a moment and just think about this and get back in my body and pause. You mentioned the pause, <laughs> taking a moment. Because remember, if we're reactive, we're not pausing. <laughs> we're just reacting. So, And also with the breath work to try and do these practices daily to practice what, whatever works for you. And if you can do it, even if you don't have time during the day, do it when you lay down to go to bed. Just practice breathing, sitting on the side of your bed or laying down. Everybody has time at that moment just to take a few minutes. And again, the more you do this, the more you're changing the neural pathways in your brain to come out of the stress to be able to get to a more relaxed place. Yeah, yeah. So uh, to to sum up what we discussed, the, the main, the main uh, elements, and maybe you want to add some, something else so if you were to recommend like the self-care routine what are the basic things that we yes. should integrate in our everyday life what would that be so I always say to start small because you don't want to say hey I'm going to do a two-hour self-care routine every day that's <laughs> that's yeah, not exactly. sustainable so what can I do right so think about what what do you love to do or like to do some people like to journal so if that's something that is you're passionate, you feel good about, then journal. Maybe doing some inspirational reading in the morning as part of your self-care routine. So kind of, it's, and I talk to clients about this, is trying to find that individual thing that works for you. Because I think a lot of people try to fit themselves in a mold that doesn't work for them. Because if you hate journaling, <laughs> it's not going to work, right? So figure out what works best for you. And just do your best to figure out a time. Because the more we can hold ourselves accountable to say, I'm going to do this in the morning. Or like for me, I don't journal every day. I journal a few times a week because that's what works for me. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to journal. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be daily, you know, figuring out when you're going to do it. I do it right before I go to sleep and just kind of write things, get things out of my head. So figuring out those things maybe. And if you haven't tried them, I'm thinking about yoga too. If you haven't tried a yoga practice, think about doing a gentle yoga yoga practice to start. And you can do even a 15 minute video online is a good place to start. Yeah. So journaling, yoga, and mindfulness elements to introduce yeah. in our everyday life, breathing exercises. Reading's good too. Reading. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for, for all of those tips. I hope that uh, everyone who's listening to us, they got something for themselves and maybe let's start small and let's start introducing those little elements for example tomorrow morning I will definitely be super mindful when I wake up and I will the minute you open small. your eyes Elena <laughs> yes yes so mm -hmm. thank you thank you very much for that definitely and yeah let's start introducing those uh, mindfulness elements step by step to our everyday life because definitely we need this to think clearer and uh, yeah to be more calm and more relaxed in in our everyday lives so thank you so much chris and uh, if our listeners want to reach out to you want to to contact you uh, where can they find you so the best place is probably through my podcast but can i just recommend an episode for your, your listeners too so I do have episode 60, which is the magic of mindfulness, simple steps to improve your life. So I, I really think that would be helpful for you. And I was actually on a different podcast, but I reposted it on my, so, but I think it's a really great episode to even go further than what we talked about today. And I also have a free gift for your listeners. I just started as a meditation coach for the Aura app. So they provide different meditations. There's mindfulness activities as well as, as breathing. There's breath work too. 
And you can also get some sleep help. I know sleep issues are huge. So um, I will send that link to you so your list listeners can get 30 days free on the Aura app. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for this gift. Uh, so we will post all of those links in the show notes. Our listeners can immediately jump there and uh, and click the link. So thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for being on the podcast on Ideas and Leaders. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. Did you enjoy this episode? Let me know that you listened by tagging me in your LinkedIn profile and using a hashtag ideas and leaders. See you in the next episode.